In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh. The prophets spoke of His majesty. This man, this Messiah, was seen as healer, provider, and miracle worker. He not only turned tables upside down, he turned our world upside down. He was controversial and loved. He pushed buttons and spoke truth. All the lead up to this one week, Holy Week. He was Hosanna in the highest, then ended up dead on the cross. He was laid in the grave and then ascended back to his father so that we could love, honor, and have eternal life with him. At Encounter Church, we will journey with Jesus starting April the 2nd as we remember our King and our Messiah and celebrate Holy Week. God is good. He's still good. Amen. With that said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a story and uh, kind of talk about the process to get to a destination that God has for us. So about 10 years ago, I have a pastor friend of mine from South Carolina that came to visit me. He stayed at my house and he was, he was getting ready to hit 40. So you always get to that age when you're 40, you're like, I should probably work on my weight. I've been there. And he started working like he's, I live in like a hill that goes up into a cul-de-sac and every morning he was running it and like, if you're coming from South Carolina to Colorado, the air is real. (laughs) And he was breathing hard. And so during that time he kept doing his training and so, but he wanted to go on a hike. So I always take people to St. Mary's Glacier. It's one of the most beautiful hikes if you've never been. It's just, it's a mile hike, but it's pretty intense. The steep of the grade is real. Even those, I do about... At that time, I was doing about 50 hikes a summer. So I was still trained and still doing things. So I was ready. But still, that hike, that made my thighs burn a little bit. And I remember him. He had his hokas on, some shorts, and like a a shirt on. And we're at the base, right? Right when you get to the base of St. Mary's Glacier, it starts going up right away. And he goes, I'm going to run it. That's my thoughts exactly. (laughs) I went, okay. I've been on this hike every once, a, once or twice a year for 10 years, and I've never seen anyone run it. I've seen a lot of trail runners. No one does, does this. And he, first time, he can barely breathe right, right now when we're there. And he goes and he takes off. And I'm just shaking my head. I'm like, okay. He goes, I'll see you up there. I go, okay. Uh, I, guess, I guess you will. I'm not kidding. But I'm surprised he even lasted this long. He went about 30, 40 yards. And all of a sudden, like, I, I see him, and he is often uh, sitting on this boulder, and he's just shaking his head, and he's like, <sighs> and I just, I just walk by him, I go, I shake my head, and I go, I'll see you up there. <laughs> I'm just going to walk. And he's just like, that is real. I said, you have no training. You cannot just pick up your shoes one day and put them on and just run up this mountain. That is, you got to prepare for this. And he goes, okay. He had a hard time just catching the breath the whole time. Even walking it, he was sweating. He's like, this is too much. And I kind of liken this to a lot of people in their walk with the Father. We kind of put on our shoes. God gives us a destination. It's a beautiful destination. Something he's put on our heart, and we just take off. And I can't tell you how many casualties I've seen of people just huffing and puffing on the side of the road. And I just walk by them because I'm like, oh, this is... I should have just, they come up with all these things like I should have, I could have, would I, if I just done this. And I'm like, and they burn themselves out. Who's ever seen Christian? Who's ever done that? When I was a young Christian, I thought I could do anything and everything at all times. And I just wore myself out. And so there is a process that God does in a training. Do you guys agree or disagree? There is a process that he puts us through. And I'm going to go read two scriptures. And one is 1 Corinthians chapter 9. It's a pretty popular one. Um, I'm an athlete, so it's one of my favorite ones. Well, I was an athlete <laughs> at one time. I don't know what I am now. It says, don't you realize that in a race everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize? So run to win. I'm sure my friend had that scripture running through his head. I should have said walk to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. 
So I run with purpose in every step, and I'm not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I might myself be disqualified. So there's a training, there's a purpose with each step, and this is the thing. We kind of forget this part in our Christian walk. There is a training, there's a purpose. Who knows David and Goliath's story? We're all familiar with it. And one of my favorite things, everyone wants to be, take down Goliath in their lives, right? I want to knock down Goliath, right? I've been to so many youth rallies and they get pumped up about that. I'm like, but there's a process. You can't just show up to Goliath and beat him. So you got this, David shows up on the scene, right? And you got all these, the, even the army's running away from this big nine foot man and just screaming and mocking him. And David's just like, who's this guy? You got scrawny little David. Going, who's this guy? And Saul's just shaking his head going, who are you? And he even says it in, in, in uh, 1 Samuel 17, in verse 32, he even calls him a little boy. You're just a little boy. Who are you to take down Goliath? And this is what I love. This is what, this is what David says, and I love this. He says, but David persisted. I've been taking care of my father's sheep and goats, he said, when a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. Do you guys understand what he just said? These are lions and bears. If I see a big eagle probably take my dog, I'm like, eh. You can have it, I guess. Like if a lion or bear came in, like I live in an area where mountain lions are real. They come. I have elk that come by me. I've seen him just walk down the street. And I'm like, eh, I can't take it. He's like, he's fighting these things. And he takes it from their mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. <laughs> Have you ever just read the Bible and go, okay. <laughs> that's a, someone that's gone fishing way too much and said, man, I caught this big 12-footer. And it's a picture of a one-foot little I have done this to both lions and bears and I'll do it to this pagan field scene too for he has defied the armies of the living God the Lord who rescued me from the claws of a lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine think about this before he faced Goliath God put him through training he prepared him for Goliath God prepares us there is a process to everything God gives us. And sometimes we get frustrated and we're a lot like my friend on the side sitting on a boulder catching our breath because we want things to just happen. We want God to just teleport us to the, to the lake and look at the glacier. You guys ever been there? Have you ever told God, hurry up? We are a micro, I, we can call it any generation. We're pretty much just a microwave generation. We want it done now. And God sometimes is a crock pot. And if you've ever had crock pot food compared to microwave food, the crock pot food is much better. I should have got more amens on that. Crock pot food is so good. It's so good. There is, it's worth the wait. It's worth going through the process. I have many kids. I've worked with youth for so long. And they all want to go, I want to be a missionary. I want to be a pastor. I'm like, that's awesome. But you must do something with it. Because they look at someone on stage and they think they just got the stage. And I even share with the kids on my, before I got into full-time ministry, I did three years of no pay working. Have you ever interned for a church? They will use it. <laughs> and you want to be a pastor? Oh, we will definitely use it because you're like, I will do anything. Oh, you will. We got some moldy, no joke, moldy barbecue hamburgers that were stuck under a seat sitting through a Kansas summer and I had to clean it up. I was like, okay, I don't get paid enough. He goes, you want to be a pastor? I said, yes, sir. <laughs> this is part of it. There is a process to everything. I want to lose weight. I have to get healthier. Six days a week, I am up, working out. I have to discipline myself because I love sugar. I love snacks. Key lime pie has my heart. Here's the thing. 
I have a, I can't discipline myself, so I had to get an app to help me. I can only just, if I eat that key lime pie, it's pretty much my day. So I have to make, <laughs> there are days I'm just like, it might be worth it. But I have to get healthier. I have to get there. I want to grow in God. You have to open your Bible. You have to go to a secret place. One of my favorite people, who knows Heidi Baker? I love her. I stopped listening to her because I'm pretty much just the same thing every time. But in my 30s, I was like, this lady showed up, her and her husband, with 20 bucks and said, and God sent them to Mozambique. And they have one of the biggest ministries called Iris Global Ministries today. They train little kids to go into, she calls it the bush bush, and they open the eyes of the blind. She has so many stories, and I just sit there going, how does, huh? That is awesome. And we watch some people on stage, like these big people, that well-known people are like, oh, I would love to do that. And they asked her one time in an interview going, so what's your, like, your secret sauce? Like, how did you get there? She goes, I spend four to six hours with God every morning. You want to be great in the kingdom? You might want to spend time with God. Did you know Jesus? Oh, I would love to be like Jesus. Do you know how much all-nighters he pulled with God, with his father? A lot. The Bible says he continued to grow in wisdom and stature. He had to put work into him growing. Even Jesus did it. And this is what I want to share with you guys. There is a process to this. There isn't just this magic pill that just happens. There is something we have to put in. And I, and I have so many people come to me all the time going, well, if God want to put it in my heart, it's just going to happen. Yes, he may open a door, but you may want to get off your butt and walk through. You actually have to do work. Do you guys get that? I have, a, I have a friend of mine that literally he said, God's going to send the girl and she's going to come to front, my front door. He is 42 and still single. And I even asked him, I go, how's that working out for you? You may want to go on a dating app. Or not. Or not. <laughs> I think from what I hear, that's the way. <laughs> I was just going by what the teens do. Well, I don't know what they do. But whatever he's doing is not work. Like he literally thinks if God wants me to be married, she's just going to show up at my door. I'm like, so do you talk to every girl that comes to your door going, are you my wife? Like I have fun with them. We have a good relationship. But I'm like, sometimes you may have to take a chance. You may have to do something with it. There is a part Jesus did. Now there is our part. If God's put something in your heart, you may want to, if God's asking you to write a book, you might need to get a pen and paper. Or a ghostwriter. <laughs> Do you know one of the things is Maryland? I love Maryland. Did you know this didn't just happen? <laughs> I've heard the stories of the work that she had to do to get to where she's at. It just doesn't happen. You want to start a podcast, you want to start a YouTube channel. Those are some of the biggest things I get with teens these days, and even older people, like, because they go, it's a quick book, buck. You guys remember Aaron Malone? I just had lunch with him. Did you know everyone sees he has 300,000 subscribers? He's making good money. Things are going well. No one saw the eight years prior. There was stuff he had to do. And even today to keep it going, he's working harder than ever. To even get to that destination to stay there, you still got to work. And there's a process. There's a discipline to our. And one of the things is I'm a very just like, just go with the flow guy. But what I'm learning I have to discipline my body. I have to. I know it's, it is very weird for me. And Sarah's probably going, a discipline, Steve? I don't know. But it could, I have to, I get up every morning, I read the word. I go work out. That's the first thing I do before I do anything. I'm going, I have to do it. And I push myself. Before I come here, I'm already working out. And I want to share, one of the things is, and before we close, this is a friend of mine. I used to be a senior pastor, and I had a guy, and all pastors and people have had this, people, this type of person in their life where they go, I want, God's called me in the ministry. He comes up to me, goes, I'm going to be in the ministry. He goes, can I preach? I go, can you pick up chairs first? Can you serve a little bit? I haven't even seen you do that. He goes, I'll do, okay. 
The following Sunday, he did some cleaning, right? This is no joke. He comes up to me. After he did, he goes, can I preach now? I went, what? <laughs> you can't, it does, that's not, okay. For some instances, that may work. But I'm like, I put in the time to get to where I'm at. I had to work hard. I'm not a fifth generation pastor. I don't have these connections in the church world. I literally had to work for everything I got. And I'm not just going to hand you the keys and go, here you go, because you put up chairs one time. I go, you give me consistency, I'll give you the pulpit. He left my church. I go, you must not want to be a pastor then. Because you know, pastoring looks good when you're speaking, but no one gets those phone, pastors get phone calls at two in the morning sometimes. You have to serve. You have to, I offer to do dishes and do trash when I when the wonderful administrators help me do service. I'm like, I still am a servant. I am a servant of people. They may open doors for this, but I still need to serve. And I just want to encourage you guys to put in the work. And I know it can easily get discouraging and going, when is that breakthrough going to happen? It happens if you keep going. <laughs> I've never seen a breakthrough happen when someone stops praying, someone stops working, and someone stops grinding. So I want to encourage you, if God placed something in your heart, and I know every single one of you, God has placed something in your heart, go after it. And go after it hard. Go get it. We got one life. Don't give up. Amen? All right. Father, we love you. I just pray over our hearts that we stay focused and connected to you. Thank you for the dreams and visions you've put in our hearts. May we stay disciplined and focused and true to the process that you've put in our hearts and lives. We absolutely love you. And everything we do, may we give glory to your kingdom. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Hi there, I'm Pastor Reese Bowling, the lead pastor here at Encounter Church. And you've been watching one of our Wednesday night encouragement messages. And I pray that it was a blessing to you. I also want you to know that, that if you'd like to become a part of a church fellowship, maybe you don't have a church home right now. Uh, we are not only an online community, but we're also an in-person community. Our in-person services are at 9 and 11 on Sunday mornings, right here at the Encounter Church location, 6825 Galena Street in Centennial, Colorado. Uh, in addition, we want to make available to you resources that would be a blessing to you. And you can contact us about those resources simply by emailing us at ec at ecdenver.org or calling the church office at 303-771-0202. But I do wanna to speak to a very particular group of people who are watching this right now. Maybe you're someone who has never actually asked Jesus to become your personal Lord and Savior. Uh, you've never gone to God and saying, God, I, I really, I, I, I'm sorry for how I've been living my life. I want to change. I believe in Jesus and, and I want him to, to not only forgive me, but I want him to lead me and to help me make better decisions. And if that's you I'm talking to right now, I want you to know that that transformation, that moment in your life is critical to your future. And if you haven't made that decision yet, all you have to do right now is wherever you're watching this or listening to this, just pray this prayer. Say, dear God, I believe in you and I believe in Jesus. And I know I've made a lot of mistakes in my life, but I want to change. And I, I want not only your forgiveness for the things I've done wrong, but I want to make you my Lord and Savior. I, I want to move forward following you. And I ask for your help. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. You know, if you prayed that prayer, uh, I'm excited for you because I know that God is about to do some great things in your life. And we'd also like to partner with you on this, this new journey in Christ. And to do that, again, all you need to do is email us at ec at ecdenver.org and just tell us what happened. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you in person or online here at Encounter Church Denver.